So when you submit a proposal to NSF, reviewers look at your proposal to see how well qualified you and your team are. One of the reasons this is important is because every reviewer of your grant is asked to look at the merit and the broader impacts in your proposal. And specifically, NSF asks for these things. NSF Merit Review will ask not just how well qualified the principal investigator is to carry out this work, but they will also ask how well qualified and how well organized and the proposal itself is. In terms of broader impacts, in the review criteria, NSF has specific questions that also relate to the principal investigator qualifications. These are about dissemination of results, which means how likely are the results that come out of this project to be published and given access to a wide audience. And some of the evidence for that possibility and likelihood will come from your prior record. You should consider the things in your track record that already show you've been successful at disseminating results. This could be a dissertation, this could be a thesis, this could be an honors thesis, this could be a conference presentation, this could be a workshop panel, this could be a prior grant. There are many small granting um, programs that allow something very concrete to be accomplished and again allow you that opportunity to show that you will succeed, you will produce product if given the opportunity and the results if, if given the opportunity to um, be awarded federal funding for this project. The record of the principal investigator and the team on the project can be evaluated, can be examined to see what kind of evidence there is that the reviewer can support the likelihood of dissemination, the likelihood of producing product from the grant, and the likelihood that this product is going to be produced by the team, that the team is uniquely qualified to do this work. So how is, this, how is this measured? How is this evaluated? And it's evaluated through the PI record, the Principal Investigator record. And this is a range of things. So for example, it's the educational experiences. There are also um, external workshops or other training activity, activities or experiences that uh, the PI may have gone through or the team may have gone through to be uniquely qualified to do this work. So places where this evidence can be given to your reviewers, the most important place is in the biosketch. So the biosketch is the biographical details of the PI and the senior personnel and the team. And this will include the degrees earned, the publications or um, research that has been produced that it relates to this project, then also items that have been produced or published that are relevant, but perhaps not completely connected. And then what's called synergistic activities. So what are the kinds of things that the PI and the team have been involved in that show, that perhaps are not publications, but show involvement in activities that relate to this work, relate to the qualifications needed to do this work, and also can be used to show a track record. The kinds of things you might expect to see in synergistic activities could be things like producing videos that might not be publications, but might be videos that are uh, showing that research in action. The other possibilities could be workshops. So if you as the PI have led a training workshop um, or put together a conference where these kinds of activities that relate to your project proposal are coming up. When I review a proposal, I look to see what is the evidence that the PI and the team will be able to accomplish what they say they're going to do. And so I can look at things like the prior record of publications, of conference presentations, of curriculum produced. There's a range of things that show me this person is a good bet to give funding to because we will see something come out of this project if we're able to fund them. And so these are the kinds of things you want to make sure are coming through in your bio sketch. They're coming through in your references if you're able to cite those kinds of publications or conference presentations. They're coming through in your narrative. So in that 15 page narrative where you talk about the project, make sure to reference things that you have done, publications you have had that will contribute to this project being successful. Reviewers are not going to take what you say literally to be true. What they're going to do is look for evidence that what you say you can do, you're actually capable of doing. And in addition to what I've discussed for the bio sketch and what should be in there, you also want to consider how particular software skills might be necessary and show how, demonstrate how you have the training in that area to do that. 
you would want to dis display your coursework, if there were courses that were relevant that showed that you were able to carry out this work. So there's a range of items on your record and your training besides what you've published that can, can, can provide a convincing case for a reviewer. But assume that the reviewer is skeptical. Your job is not just to say what you can do and let the reviewer believe it. Your job is to convince the reviewer that you can and will do this. When you're putting together a proposal that involves a team of investigators, a collaboration, again, how are you going to provide evidence that this is a collaboration that will be successful? One consideration is how are you showing that there is actually a collaboration? Are there projects that have been done previously together by team members? Are there conferences or are there co-presentations? Are there curricula? What is there that shows that this is a real collaboration and that the members in that collaboration have experience working together? One consideration is to look at what, you, um, what each member of the team is going to contribute. So to divide up the responsibilities, for example, I've had projects where one of us is responsible for recruiting participants and another one of us is responsible for dissemination of the results. So finding a way that the people in the team have got responsibilities and duties that actually really work to their strengths. Your job in writing your grant proposal is to make it abundantly clear that you will successfully carry out this research. You want to try and make your case low risk. And again, if you're working with a team and you're working with a collaboration, make sure you consider how you've shown each member of the team is experienced. Each member of the team is contributing something that works to their strengths and will allow this project to be successful should NSF decide to fund it.